So here I have a uh, workbook with uh, three sheets that contain data and a description and labels. So the data is numeric data. The description is uh, a scenario with a question that I would try to answer by analyzing the data that is in the first worksheet. And labels um, is uh, this sheet that has uh, text variables, uh, which are uh, you know labels that I can use in graphs, created uh, based on one of the columns of my data set, which I'm not going to use for this demonstration. But this is how you would normally create labels. So this, uh, these labels essentially would have uh, one of the variables, which is teacher experience, uh, and then uh, have text describing that variable. Sometimes this is useful in graphs. So let me go to the description. So here's the scenario that we have. The Department of Education of a state in the USA believes that SAT scores are strongly influenced by two predictor variables. SAT scores are scores that are used for entrance in university programs. So this is primarily for high schools. So high schools that have students that score high in SAT scores are perceived as successful in most uh, uh, school districts. Uh, they want their high schools to, to have that, to have students that score highly in uh, SAT scores. Data is collected from a number of school districts in the states for a given year and a data analysis is commissioned by the Department of Education. Question. What is the order of importance of the predictors with respect to SAT scores? The variables that I have are uh, average years of teacher experience by the school district teachers, suspensions are the number of suspensions in the districts due to student behavioral problems, and the average SAT score in a school district. So here's the data. So teacher experience, so we have here in years. Presumably, the, the, the greater the average teacher experience for the district, uh, the better it is in terms of SAT scores, but we're going we're gonna to be testing this. This is the SAT score, this teacher experience, and suspensions, the number of suspensions in the district. So presumably, if there are a lot of suspensions, uh, which may be driven by behavioral problems, then we'll have lower SAT scores. We'll see if that relationship exists. So we're going to be trying to find the order of importance of those two predictors, or these two predictors here, on SAT scores so that we can uh, advise the uh, school district in this respect. So I will create a project file to restore my data analysis with Warp PLS. So I'll click on step one, create project file. And I'll create this project file with the same name as the uh, file that uh, I will be using with my data. And that is under my downloads area. So this is the file here. So I'll just use the first name of the file, .prj, and this will be my project file, same name as the data file. I'll save. I will now go to step two, which is read data from file. And uh, as long as I have not modified my data set, I can open the file uh, uh, and, and, and read it uh, from our PLS without having to close the Excel file. So I will read from file and I will go to that. I will choose uh, uh, the Excel file that I, this one, the Excel file that I want to read.
So the file is being read, so let me go back here. So there is this import wizard that reads the file for me. And here I just have to click on next. And finish. So the, the file seems to have been read OK. There are some empty cells here in the file that the software will take care of as we move forward. So they are noted as NAN, not, N -A -N, not a number. Now I'll go to step three, where I'm going to be pre-processing the data. And this involves imputing those uh, missing cells with data using one of the algorithms available from the software. So the default algorithm is arithmetic mean imputation. This is the one we'll use here. It is usually a good idea to use a missing data imputation algorithm then to delete those rules that have the missing data in terms of uh, the results at the end. So data deletion tends to bias the results more than uh, than using a missing data imputation algorithm. Not only that, deleting data tends to reduce your data file, to reduce the sample size, which is also problematic for data analysis perspectives. So the data seems to look correct. This is the standardized data. Everything seems to be OK. I'll click Yes. Now I will build my model. So I will create a latent variable, which will be my main dependent variable in the model. And that will be SAT. I'll create another latent variable. Which will be teacher experience. I'll use that indicator and I'll create another variable which will be suspensions. There's no need to worry about whether the measurement model is reflective or formative because uh, I'm using single indicators per latent variable. So the latent variable can each one of these variables in OVOS can aggregate more than one uh, variable, more than one column in my data set. Here I'm using only one variable per latent variable. Uh, so there is no need to choose the measurement model. Now I'm going to create direct links among these variables. And these direct links they, they, uh, they reflect my assumption that these are predictors of this variable. So that teacher experience and suspensions um, cause SAT scores. So that's the assumption that I'm going to test and what I'm going to try to find out if those assumptions are true. So if these two links really exist in reality and which one influences more SAT scores. So what I'm going to do now is go to settings and change the default inner analysis in a model analysis algorithm to linear because I want to conduct conduct a linear analysis, not a nonlinear analysis. And here, I really don't need, uh, I could use robust path analysis because, again, I'm not aggregating different variables into the latent variables. 
So this is the simplest algorithm that, that actually assumes that we use uh, single indicators per latent variable, uh, and that's robust path analysis. So I'll save my settings, and I'll run my analysis. So what, this, what these results are telling me are the following, that teacher experience does influence uh, SAT scores and the probability that this link doesn't exist in reality is only 3%. So the p-value is 3% or 0 0.03. My threshold to assume that this link is statistically significant is 0 0.05. So if the p-value is lower than 0 0.05 or that the probability that the link does not exist in reality uh, is uh, 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 lower than 5%, then I assume that this link exists in reality. And roughly speaking, I'm, I'm trying to use uh, intuitive uh, language here that, that, that is easier to understand. Now, suspensions does not have to, does not seem to affect SAT scores because the p-value here is above the threshold of 0 0.05. So even though it looks like it's a negative association, it's too small to be uh, considered statistically significant. And therefore, I assume that the relationship between suspensions and SAT scores is actually non-existence, non-existent, or zero. So if I go back to my key question, what is the order of importance of the predictors with respect to SAT scores? The order of importance is teacher experience is much more important than suspensions because suspensions apparently has no effect on SAT scores. How could we explain this? Well, one way to explain this is that teacher experience, teachers with more experience they are better teachers. In suspensions are not so important because um, the, the students that uh, have behavioral problems may be the brightest students in the district, the restless ones. And therefore, so they, there may be suspensions, they, they're, they're, uh, they may be getting into uh, some trouble, so to speak, suspended for misbehavior, but that does not affect SAT scores, maybe because they are very good students to start with. What I can say also do is go to uh, the graphs by going to the option view plot linear and nonlinear relationships among latent variables. And if I, take, if I look at the relationship that is significant, that is statistics, statistically significant between teacher experience and SAT scores and click on it, I will, I will be uh, shown the graph. This graph here um, is for standardized with, with the scales standardized. If I use the option, um, view focus relationship graph, graph with segments and unstandardized scales. And there are not multiple segments here because my analysis is not nonlinear, it's just linear. But then I get this coefficient that is not standardized. And the interpretation of this coefficient is interesting. This beta equal 10.39 tells me that for each one year increment in teacher experience, there is an increase on average, there is an increase in SAT scores of 10 points. So if we were to report these results to the uh, state, the Department of uh, the Department of Education of that of that state uh, from which the data was collected, 
uh, we would say uh, spend funds in increasing teacher experience by perhaps uh, offering better salaries uh, to, to the extent possible and better benefits so that teachers will stay with the school district as opposed to leaving and moving into other professions. But we would also say to them, don't worry about suspensions. And this advice can turn into millions of dollars in savings because the school, the, the, the Department of Education will not try to act on this, which would, might require uh, hiring more uh, 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 security personnel and uh, taking other actions that would limit the number of suspensions. This doesn't seem to be a problem in terms of SAT scores, but increasing teacher experience has an effect on uh, SAT scores. We could actually go uh, further and uh, see if there is a relationship between teacher experience and suspensions. And again, if the relationship is uh, negative, that, that would mean that teacher experience would, uh, would uh, decrease uh, uh, suspensions. That would be ideal, but it could be positive as well. That doesn't mean that I should not act on teacher experience and, and try to improve it. Um, but it would mean that I would have to address uh, suspensions through other means. Actually, it's negative. So in other words, uh, increasing teacher experience also helps reduce suspensions because it's a negative relationship. So an increase in this variable leads to a decrease in this variable, whereas an increase in this variable leads to an increase in this variable, SAT scores. So Increasing teaching experience has a doubly uh, uh, useful, beneficial effect, which is also that it reduces suspensions, which overall, I guess, would be good for the school district, even though suspensions has no effect on SAT scores. So this concludes this demo. Uh, using the high school district's data set.